This is Center Stage, putting your firm in the spotlight by highlighting business owners and other industry experts to help take your firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I'm your host, John Henson, and this week we're talking about employee benefits and all of the options that are available to you as a business owner. I mean, you know, I'm sure you know that, you know, having competitive and attractive benefits is key to recruiting and retaining the the people that you want on your staff. And we also know that maintaining and, and choosing those benefits can be tricky and expensive. I mean, we deal with it here. We're a small business. We've gone through this as well. Um, but Joining us this week, I have uh, two people who can tell us all about the different options that you can choose from as a business owner, a couple of different routes that you can take uh, so that you can make the best decision for you and your firm. So I want to welcome uh, Nelson Manis and Alexandra Blanco from Venture. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us, John. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, really quickly, I'll introduce myself. I'm Alexandra yeah. Blanco. I'm a business consultant here in South Florida. Uh, with Venture HR, we are an HR technology company and uh, first and foremost, a PEO as well. So we'll dive into that a little deeper. Um, Nelson? Yes, Nelson Mann is here. Uh, I am a regional sales manager here at Venture, uh, Venture Employer Services. And uh, we're talking to you today from our Miami Beach office location uh, on a bright sunny day. So looking forward to, to discussing this topic with you, John. Yeah, so I, I guess to kind of start, you know, we talk about just the importance of delegating certain things. You know, I mean, our audience, lawyers, financial pros, uh, a lot of them own their own firm. Maybe they're like a true solo operation. And one of the things that we really talk about is just the importance of delegating a lot of those things that are you know, sort of ancillary to running a firm, you know, you're, you know, and, and you go to law school, you go to business school, you're not necessarily a marketing expert or an HR expert or something like, so we talk about the importance of delegating a lot of that stuff. In your guys' opinion, why should business owners explore delegating and outsourcing benefits management, other HR related stuff? That's a great question. Um, John, you honestly hit the nail on the head when you said the ancillary tasks that, you know, come along with being a business owner, because most people, they don't think about being an employer. They just think, okay, I have this passion. I have this idea. I'm an expert in this field. I can, um, you know, create a business. And then overnight, they shift from being an entrepreneur to an employer. And then we have to think about 401ks and health benefits and, as much as we want to control our baby, you know, your business being your baby and you want to have uh, your hands in all the cookie jars, you're not the expert. You know, there are people who work for 10 years studying health benefits, studying the trends, doing strategies. And so it's really, you know, running a business takes a village. It takes collaboration. And I always encourage to bring in the experts to help you with whatever you're not familiar with. It's kind of like trying to fix you know, a plumbing issue in your house by yourself. You're not a plumber. You're probably going to make it worse actually trying to do it yourself. So, you know, I just think it's always best to consult with experts. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I even, I even went through this uh, here at Spotlight Branding because, you know, I, I was in one role and then I kind of took over a lot of the admin tasks and I was just thrown into this world of HR and, and even admin and IT and all that kind of stuff. I had never, I never really knew about, you know, I mean, I knew like, okay, HR, you can hire, that's who hires people. That's how, you know, that's who's kind of responsible for the benefits, but like, I didn't know anything about how to be. And so like, you already are strapped for time as a business owner. And now you have to commit to this big learning curve of all this HR stuff, especially with, you know, a lot of laws and, and regulations and all of that, that you have to learn and make sure that you're in compliance with. So broadly speaking, you know, what kinds of options are available to a small business owner when it comes to just providing basic health benefits, you know, or maybe even 401k, you know, what are, what are some benefits, I guess, that 
all businesses you think should be offering to people? And then maybe what are some ones that kind of stand out that maybe can put someone over the edge and really stand out? Um, you know, so I think that health is something, well, not even that I think, it is. Health is something that affects all of your employees. It affects how they show up and perform to work. And it also uh, affects their families if they have a family plan. And so this is something that is very sensitive. And even though it may be something that you don't want to look at, you don't want to think about it, you just want to kind of, you know, put blinders on, it affects the way your employees perform at work. It affects their morale. Um, so I think to offer health benefits and truly have an expert strategize on what are the best plans for your employees, I really think that is the best thing an employer can do. Um, it's really unfortunate when you hear that they need, they lose their key employee just because they don't offer dental benefits and they need a root canal. You know, one root canal is going to cause you to lose your top performer. Um, it's unfortunate when we hear things like that. And then additionally, uh, at least venture through our PEO model, we offer an employee assistance program. And that has a lot to do with mental health, which is not traditionally covered with health benefits. And I think that that is extremely important as well. And that's something you can even offer before health benefits. And it's very affordable, very economic. And I think that employees would really appreciate that even if we weren't ready to offer health benefits. I think the mental health aspect is great. And then, you know, to your point, also 401k, you know, helping them set up for retirement, helping them with financial literacy, savings, investments, things like that. Um, but I'm sure Nelson also has something to add to that. Yeah, I was going to add uh, your last point, which is 401k and just uh, planning for retirement. I think st statistically having a 401k in any uh, business uh, it helps you attract and retain, you know, top talent, which is right, you know, in our forte, right? What we focus on is the entire employee life cycle. And from a benefit perspective, I think you hit it on the head, uh, health insurance, uh, typically what we're hearing is that before people even consider what their salary and what their pay is, they want to understand what does my benefits package look like, right? Coming to this company. And, you know, what does this mean for me? And, you know, with the landscape having changed so much uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how people are, are, are working now, uh, the hybrid type locations, uh, these are even more important today than they were at one point. So uh, I would definitely agree with you there, Alex, on health insurance being, you know, the pivotal. Uh, an employee assistance program is is important as well, and it it, it creates a, a synergy there within with the organization. And four hundred one k absolutely helps attract and retain top talent. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a couple of questions that I had I want to build off of that. You know, I think a lot of business owners might assume that they are expected to cover the entire health insurance premium. Is that what you're seeing out there? Or do, or do you see some different options? Maybe a, an employer covers half of the premium or another percentage of it. What have you seen out there? So we do see um, a lot of the companies tend to just do the minimum, which is 50% coverage. And that's fine. Their employees tend to be very happy, but there's also flexibility, which I don't know if there's enough education around that with business owners, where you know you can do different contributions for different tiers of the plans, or um, like employee only, family, um, employee spouse. So you know you can strategize what you can afford to still give them the best that you're capable of that year or you know that calendar year. And that really does take in bringing in the expert to see and run the numbers because it is, it's an exercise. It takes time. It takes crunching numbers. It takes reviewing Excel sheets. Um, but if you put in that time, it'll pay off in the long run, not just that immediate year, but in the years to follow because you're constantly going to be educating yourself and also educating your employees. And I think that's so important because you want to empower them to actually use their benefits. So many times employers are paying for benefits that aren't even being used um, because employees don't know what's covered. Uh, so I think education on both the employer and employee side is extremely crucial to making it a win-win-win for everyone. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I know one of the most like confusing things for us every year is we get our new kind of, you know, benefits package and, and we have to kind of run through because it just changes every year. And that's not necessarily the provider's fault. That's that's a broader, you know, issue with the with the health insurance system in general, but just, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what is your deductible? What does it mean to have a deductible again? What's the difference between a deductible and a copay? And just kind of going through all of that. And so having resources available where people can just continually be educated, reminded is, is really beneficial. The other thing that I wanted to ask about is around the 401ks you know i obviously with everything you're going to have you know champions and detractors of it you know is the 401k a standard or do you see other alternatives for for retirement planning maybe there's some types of life insurance or an ira or is it still 401k is the best bet nelson do you want to talk on this yeah i would say 401k is probably still that you know has the lion's share in terms of you know what the options are um, and, and there are different ways to structure 401ks in where you know, the company is offering a, a contribution or a matching contribution as well. What we find is that when, once, when the company is way more engaged in, in offering that type of, uh, benefit and including a, an employee match, that is really the trigger that, uh, you know, helps the participation out incredibly. Having a retirement vehicle is important, but knowing that your company is actually vested in, and invested in you and your future makes all the difference in the world. There are several other options out there, but none of them are, are quite the same uh, as the effects of, of 401k. And in addition, uh, from a 401k perspective, typically a 401k will let you defer the most amount of money or the most amount of funds uh, without uh, being subject to, to taxation. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, I think broadly speaking, I think a lot of people um, know about working with like a regular insurance broker for benefits, but you guys mentioned up front, you are a PEO company. What is a PEO and how does that differ from working with maybe just a regular insurance broker? So a PEO stands for Professional Employer Organization, and it essentially provides human resources and technology to companies um, in a co-employment relationship. So their shared liability, fiduciary liability, compliance wise. Um, and so, you know, what does providing human resources and services mean? Um, you know, it's managing the entire employee life cycle. So from onboarding to recruitment, um, to payroll, taxes, health benefits, performance reviews, um, even termination and um, retirement. We help you with everything of across the board when it comes to the employees, even their time clock, their expense reimbursements. Um, and so doing that in a co-employment model means that first of all, you're relying on us as well. We have just as much skin in the game to make sure that we are on top of um, compliance and also um, giving you insights and transparency into your organization so that you can actually implement changes um, to help you scale and grow further. So that is one of the other benefits of a PEO. Um, and I'll let Nelson add on to that because there's so much more as well. Yeah, no, thanks, Alex. So those are those are all amazing points. A, a PEO really is a, an employer within itself. So we are a company just like any other company. And what we do is we pool these resources and other companies together under a service agreement to really establish some some collective purchasing power. And that, that's really what stands out from a PEO perspective, aside from, you know, the, uh, the stabilization of costs, the, the transfer of the liability and the risk, the ability to attract and retain top talent, and also the reduction of administrative burdens that companies are faced with today. So uh, as a small, and we, we focus on typically the small and mid-sized business sector, uh, most of those businesses don't have access to these type of resources, don't have economies of scale. They may be providing a census of 10 or 15 or 20 or 100 employees, whereas you know, a company like Venture has hundreds of thousands of employees that we bring to our carriers, uh, albeit medical, even 401k and other ancillary benefits. And we ask for 
rates based on those economies of scale. And we try to pass that on to our employers. But most importantly, it's not just about paying a lower rate, which could potentially happen. It's about sustaining that. And that's what our business model allows us to do is provide better stabilization of costs moving forward because we can diversify that entire risk throughout a much larger pool of companies. Yeah. So, so if I understand it correctly, and if you guys operate a different way, please let me know because it's I, I'm basing it off of other conversations that I've had with with other PEO uh, people in the past. But it, it, it's my understanding that you know it's essentially like basically taking a small company who doesn't have a, maybe a dedicated HR person or maybe doesn't even necessarily need a full time person in that seat. And they rely on the resources from a much larger company for sake of argument, like a Coca-Cola, for example, who has thousands of employees and a whole massive dedicated HR department. Is it basically like that? And you're, you're just kind of leaning on them to help them take care of some of those tasks for you? Or is there a different way it goes about doing it, at least in your case? There, there's a slightly different way. Um, ultimately, we still need a point of contact at the client company. Sometimes yeah. that is, you know, the owner. Sometimes that is uh, a dedicated HR person, albeit, you know, someone that's general has general knowledge in that field, or someone that's, you know, HR certified and and was hired for that purpose. We can we can work in different ways for different companies, but we always do rely on on. We can't just be your single source of HR. We are the company that you can rely on for information. We're there to supplement uh, what you have in place and to guide uh, versus maybe Googling, which you know, a lot of people do it, uh, to f- figure out you know, how, to, how to handle, let's just say a termination, for example, or even going to a labor attorney, uh, which could be you know, costlier than working with a company like ours. In other cases, there's nothing in place. So uh, you know, that decision, which ultimately falls on, you know, the, the owners of the owner or owners of the company, uh, they're personally liable for those decisions. So we offer a, an avenue for them to share that risk uh, with another employer that only focuses on the employee aspect and the administrative aspect of all businesses. You know, we are not in the business of manufacturing. We're not in the business of uh, you know, construction, for example, but we are definitely in the business of the human capital management, the employee life cycle, and this is where we dedicate all of our time and resources to. Yeah, and so I, you know, I, obviously we talk about benefits. Um, I think you mentioned like recruiting and, and termination. I mean, how exactly would that work? Right. So essentially, what you want to think of with a PEO is also just having a one-stop shop, right? So instead of having all these vendors that you have to communicate with for, so maybe for time clocks, for applicant tracking, for recruitment, um, you are able to just look at one portal, one single sign-on. You know, you don't have a bunch of emails coming in from different vendors. It's just emails coming in for, for venture. So for example, you mentioned recruitment. Everyone knows ZipRecruiter, Monster, Indeed, Glassdoor, but those all come with a price. The recruiter, for example, is $300 a month. So that's included with a PEO. So instead of having to pay the individual fees for all these job postings, and then also having to use your manual time or your time to manually enter all those job posts and create them and publish them and follow up with the candidates, we have a system, an applicant tracking system, that basically just you create one job post and it goes out to all the boards it's included with our service, so you're not paying these additional fees. And again, it also, um, it tracks the progress of the application. So if you want to schedule an interview, if you want to review their resume, if you want to send an offer letter, if you want to send a rejection letter, it's all formalized there. It's in compliance already because we have these pre-made templates for you. Um, and then what's great is if you do decide to hire someone, all that information feeds into the onboarding platform. So every step and every um, technology piece speaks to each other. And that also alleviates a lot of noise and a lot of um, time spent communicating with all these vendors. 
um, that don't speak to each other. Whereas in house, internally, venture, we're all going to be speaking to each other, whether it's someone from the time clock department or the applicant tracking department or the health benefits. We know this is our client. We're going to come together as a team, as an extension of their team, and you know, make sure that everything is smooth and that we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and so I guess kind of kind of the next step to that, you know, we talk about the importance of of documenting all of your systems and processes. And at, is there I try to think about a, a, a way to word this to where it makes sense. You know, when when people work with a PEO, do they then have to adopt the the policies and procedures of of the PEO that they work with or or you know whoever they're they're combining with or is there you know like if for example maybe they want to hire a specific person because they want to create a specific kind of culture and environment in their firm is there flexibility in there to work with that or are you you know do you still have to just trust that the PEO is still going to find the best person for the job by adopting their processes yeah, I can take that one. So it, we have, as a company, you know, we have our own HR uh, processes, right? Yeah. And as we contract and, and, and agree to, to do these services with uh, the client companies that we bring on board, uh, from a uh, compliance standpoint, there's a standardization there, right? depending on what state that you're working in and you know all states are not equal <laughs> we, we all know that right but depending on the state that you're working in we will from a standardized level have the same compliance needs and 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 requirements as our client companies that being said we also can will cater to uh, helping companies create their corporate culture and keep them in compliance, most importantly, while they attempt to do that. So we want to do an HR assessment when we bring on a new, a new uh, client company. We want to better understand what their initiatives are so that we can continue to further help them grow that culture and, you know, share that responsibility, uh, you know, throughout our, our uh, contracted relationship. That's essentially yeah. uh, how that would work. Awesome. And if I can add on to that, um, you know, so Nelson mentioned that we really want to understand these businesses and when we're initially meeting with them. And that's actually something that's very unique to venture. And it's our diagnostic model. And that diagnostic model is essentially, we don't have pre-bundled packages. We don't believe in a one box fits all. Every business is different, every industry, every culture, to your point, right? So we like to do a diagnostic and it's essentially like an audit and we're gonna audit all your processes and procedures. We're gonna get to know, you know, are you more corporate? Are you more family style? What is it, What do you want your business to look like? And with that, we can implement um, a game plan. And, you know, sometimes it's all at once. Okay, we're gonna do this all in one go. Or sometimes it's quarter by quarter. This is what our game plan is gonna be. Um, and that's really where the people support comes in um, as an extension of your business. Um, and we've honestly been complimented by many of our clients as well that they felt that prior to being with Venture, they had to change the way they did things and they had to change their processes to meet the capabilities of the vendors. But with Venture, we are so flexible and so customizable that they don't need to tailor their business to meet our capabilities. We really tailor our technology to meet their needs and their wants. And I think that that is where true, you know, a true partnership comes into play. Um, so yeah. I think that's really special and unique about Venture. Yeah, and that's great. And so I guess kind of the final question uh, that I had for you two before, before we wrap up, and I know um, this could be a little tough, but, you know, broadly speaking, you know, what are the pros? That's the easy part. But what are maybe some potential downsides to taking the PEO route? Well, first of all, I think that one of the cons of a PEO is it is an investment. You know, we are providing Fortune 500 benefits, Fortune 500 technology to small and medium-sized businesses. 
So it is an investment, um, but the pro on that end is that usually it reduces your overhead costs and year over year you have more predictability with your costs. Um, there's not so much fluctuation or mortality. So that is, you know, a con and a pro in of itself. And I think another con is, you know, back to business owners wanting to have control over their business and have their hands in the cookie jar. It can be really difficult to relinquish some of that control. And that is what you're doing with the PEO. So you have to know that before you enter that relationship, that you have to be willing to be open-minded and collaborate with another partner. Um, and so those are two cons that I can think of. Yeah, and, and you know, that that's... You know, we we do, but we talked earlier about you know the delegating aspect of that, and I think one of the ways you know, and, and we've talked in previous episodes about that control aspect, and and I think if you are still able to keep that you know open door of communication going in and continuing to collaborate, it makes that relinquishment of control a little bit easier because you're still on top of things and you're constantly aware uh, of what's going on. Nelson, did you have anything you wanted to add to to this discussion? Well. No, I, I was thinking about those same uh, the control and and actually gaining uh, better control. What we f have found, some people have said, as a as a con, is that we weren't uh, you know able to uh, be the you know the, the the crutch, if you will, or 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 play the bad guy role in some cases where you know some employers were were looking for us to to be that compliance company and to be that let's just say uh, uh, you know security uh, yeah. aspect uh, you know for their employees because they wanted to build you know a certain type of culture where where they didn't want to be presumed to be as you know the bad guys for having certain policies so uh, and that, and it didn't work out, you know, the way some client companies expected. And I was just thinking of some particular examples around that, uh, realizing that ultimately that was a reason why companies decided not to continue that partnership, as uh, we just weren't doing, you know, some of the dirty work that they, they needed to do internally as a company. Uh, so, and, and understandable, but that's not what a PDO really is for in order to be a true partner, uh, you know, and I listened to something today, which is critical, we both have to be going in the same direction. Uh, we can get into a, a, a car, but if you're going in that direction and someone else is going in the other, then that relationship is just not going to work out. Yeah. Absolutely. So I don't want to end on any any negative note. So I mean, you know, you know, what are what are then some of the big reasons why you might want to explore the PEO route? Well, for for the the model within itself, I mean, the stabilization of, of cost is something that we hear is a tremendous benefit, tremendous benefit and feature of the PEO model. Uh, you know, having insights on, into uh, what, you know, future costs, not only current costs, but how we can, you know, withstand some of the uh, unfortunate, you know, incidents that happen uh, when you're dealing with, you know, medical insurance, when you're dealing with benefits, when you're dealing with payroll taxes, when you're dealing with compliance, and having, you know, a company there to share that risk with you and, and a, a large company with, with expertise, obviously, uh, makes all the difference in the world while companies are trying to navigate through, you know, the, the now hundreds of different regulatory divisions that they may fall under. The attraction and retention tool is huge. Having a, a, a company like ours and all of the benefits that are offered to employees really enhance, you know, how they're, they're attracting, you know, what type of, of ads they're putting out there, what offering. Uh, how they would compare to some of their competitors and gaining competitive advantages over um, their existing competitors. That's what everybody is, is out to do, right? Is how do we attract the best people? How do we retain them? And a PEO could actually bring in a lot of Fortune 500 style benefits to small organizations that allow them to, to really recruit at a very, very high level. Um, 
And then lastly, that reduction of the administrative burden, you know, it's freeing people up to do what they do best. And I think we, we, we really touched on that early that, uh, you know, regardless of the business that you start, that's what you are an expert on. You are not an expert on, you know, pro procuring uh, health insurance, dealing with, as you said, all of the nuances, whether, you know, how yeah. deductibles yeah. work and coinsurances work and things of that nature. Um, that is, you know, an expertise within itself. So uh, having a company like a, like a venture a company like ours that can really help companies navigate through that could be the difference between, you know, uh, scaling to, to, and really achieving their goals uh, as a business. Awesome. Yeah, so I think, sorry, I think two, yeah, go ahead. Benefits, uh, two pros of a PEO as well in addition to that is, first of all, just enhancing your employee experience. Because that's what we mentioned, right? We're helping you manage the employee life cycle. You focus on your product, on your service, and on your clients. We're not going to touch your clients or your product. But if you truly see your employees as an asset to your company as opposed to a liability, I think the PEO makes so much sense. Um, and it also helps you grow your business and scale faster, not just because you have your employees and again, the reduction of administrative burden, but you have that mental capacity. You're no longer being bogged down by all these stressors. You have it outsourced, you have it delegated. So you can really focus on driving business. Um, and you know, even you know, you don't have to take our word for it. The National Association for PEO even says that uh, traditionally businesses that partner with the PEO grow at a rate nine times faster year over year than businesses who do not. So it really is just overall, I think, um, an amazing model. And it may not be for everyone. And that is why venture offers ASO and payroll only. But even then, you know, there's carve outs. Uh, we do tiered pricing. We can white label the technology. So again, that's something that will make your employees feel like, wow, I'm working at this gigantic company with this technology. Um, and, you know, we're able to do that for you. Um, so I think it's just amazing um, how you impact the employee experience and how you impact our local communities, right? Because all of these small and medium-sized businesses, they are what make the culture of our community and so, so do the people. Um, so I think it's really just about taking care of your community and your people um, and making it a win-win for everyone. Yeah, I, I love that. So how can uh, people reach out to you to see all of the things that you guys offer and potentially uh, set up a relationship? You can reach us via email at alexandra.blanco at venture.com um, and also on LinkedIn, Alexandra Blanco um, and then Nelson. Yeah, nelson.manus at venture.com, LinkedIn as well. Just look me up my name, Nelson Manus. Um, yeah, awesome. And I'll have, I'll have that uh, information in the show notes there. Um, one final question. Um, one of you, both of you can answer it. You know, we got two people on, so we could, we could have some bonus here. Um, but it's our final question. We ask everybody here. And it's if you had one final piece of advice for our listeners, what would it be? Don't be afraid to look at what options are available out there in terms of uh, a partnership as it relates to, you know, your human capital management and uh, your number one asset within your company, which should be your employees. Um, we're not the be all end all. Uh, every company for the most part can, can do similar things in this business. What differentiates us is that we work off of a single source platform and we don't try to box people in, as we alluded to previously, into one particular model. It's not, this is what we offer, you need to fit in. And if you don't, we can't do business. No, we can look at this from top down or bottom up. We can start with simply just offering a payroll service uh, all the way to adding HR to that on an administrative service model. And then we can even go into a co-employment relationship or even an employer of record. And there are many businesses that do not want to get into the employer business. And so 
take a look at all the options that are available out there. Uh, keep an open mind and uh, just partner with the company that definitely is uh, the company that you feel is going in the same direction that you would. Awesome. Love it. Well, this has been uh, really great. I I've learned a lot, I know. Um, and so, you know, it cleared some things up for me personally. And I know that that's illuminated a lot for, for everybody out there. Um, so that's going to do it. Uh, thank you guys so much for continuing to rate and review wherever you're consuming the show. Uh, all of the other feedback that you're sending in, we really do appreciate it. And that's it. Nelson, Alexander, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.